So this is Milliken's oil drop experiment. Now there's lots of videos on YouTube and online that go over what exactly happened in this experiment, how it worked and what Milliken found. Uh, I wanna more focus on the equations and the mathematics he may have used. Of course, the equations and mathematics he probably used were a little bit more in depth, um, but this is for more of a grade 12 uh, physics 30 level. So to start with, we just kind of want to remind what was happening here. What Robert did, or sorry, what Milliken did, was he sprayed oil into this container and he had a little hole here. What this hole allowed was just to allow the oil drops to fall through. Now they fell through into a uniform electric field. Okay, This electric field is pointing downwards and remember electric fields are based off of how a positive charge would move. So a positive charge would go downward towards the uh, bottom plate. That means we know our bottom plate here has a negative charge and our top plate has a positive charge. Okay. Now what he also did was he would fire x-rays into this area of the uniform electric field. What that did was it ionized the air and when the air is ionized, it now has electrons floating within this area. These electrons would attach themselves to the oil drops. Now, this is where Millikan started doing and uh, doing his equations. What he knew and what he understood was each oil drop was a different size. So each oil drop was a different size. What I mean by that is volume and mass were different, okay? He was able to determine the mass because he had this microscope here. Okay, this microscope allowed him to zoom in on a specific oil drop uh, and determine the diameter. From the diameter, he could determine the area and the volume. And what he knew about this oil was he knew the density of the oil. So from there, he could solve for the mass. Now, something else to understand is since each oil drop was a different size, uh, these electrons and the amount of electrons that would gather onto these oil drops would be different. Okay, and at this point, he didn't know they were electrons. They were just negative charges and he just realized that these things were negatively charged. So each oil drop each oil drop would have different charges. And how did he figure out the charge of the oil drop? That's what I want to focus on today. So since he could change the voltage, aka changing the electric field strength, he was able to, once in a while, get an oil drop in this area that lined up with his microscope that had the same amount of electric force as the force of gravity acting on it. Now when this occurs, we get a net force of zero. This is why it's a suspended, it's floating oil drop. And this is the type of equations he could have possibly used. He could create a net force equation. And remember, the net force is the sum of all forces. So it would be the electric field plus the force of gravity. Now at this point, I'm going to apply my directional, um, my directional symbols here, so positive and negative, based on if it's going up or down. I'm going to make the upwards motion positive and the downwards motion negative. So F net, my force of gra electric, my electric force is going upward, so this is positive electric force, subtracting my downward force of gravity. I'm simply doing this so when I plug in my numbers, I do not have to worry about the positive or negatives because I've already taken into consideration the direction. 
Now remember, my net force is zero. So there's zero net force Newtons acting on this. That means if we move our force of gravity to the other side, we can see that we will get our force of gravity equaling our electric force. And remember, this is only true for those few oil drops that would be suspended in air. Now from here, we can apply a few simple calculations. The force of gravity is mass times gravity, and the electric force is <clears throat> E times Q. Okay, and remember, the uniform electric field in parallel plates equals the electric force divided by the charge that's being acted on by the electric uh, electric field. Now some things to really understand about these these numbers that we're going to be finding and plugging in. This mass is the mass of the oil drop. This electric field he determines. He has control over the voltage. Okay, so he can figure that out fairly easily because he knows voltage. And then Q, Q is the charge of the oil drop. And it's important to remember, each oil drop would have different charges, okay? So our mass of the oil drops would be different and the charges of the oil drops would be different. Now, whenever you solve for Q here, something really cool would happen, okay? So if we manipulate this formula, we have a very simple an elegant equation that we can solve for the charge of the oil drop. Okay, so this is the charge of oil drops. Now remember, they're all different. So if we go over and maybe look at a few possible charges of the oil drops, something really cool was occurring. And this is what he was able to prove in this experiment. He figured out that each number was a multiple of a very special number. So let's say the charge of the oil drop was 4.8 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. Well, he figured out this is 3 times 1.60 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. Maybe he does a second experiment and gets 6.4 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. Well, he was able to figure out, well, this is 4 times 10, 4 times 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. Or in our third experiment, we get 8 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs for the charge of the oil drop. And I hope you see a pattern here. This is 5 times 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. And you probably guessed right, this is 6 times 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. So what he was determining here was all of his oil drops charges were always multiples of 1.60 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. And this is where he made a hypothesis that each oil drop was gaining, in order to gain a negative charge, it would take on a little charged particle known as electrons. So for this oil drop here, it had three electrons. For this oil drop here in his experiment, it had four electrons. This oil drop here had five electrons. And lastly, this oil drop here had six electrons. And he determined that every time he found the charge of an oil drop, he found that it was always a multiple of 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19. Something to really important to understand, this didn't happen every single time. And this is why he got scrutinized by colleagues and other scientists, because he kind of ignored a few um, different values he got. He didn't take into consideration every single experimental value he was gaining. But at the end of the day, 
Millikan was able to properly hypothesize for the charge of an electron. So that just kind of goes to show how special science is and what a hypothesis can do uh, moving forward as you make more discoveries.